Hi, I'm Lindsay with Osprey and your expert for all things PAX. So here at Osprey, our love at adventure has not dwindled. During this unique and often challenging time of physical distancing, we want to continue to find moments to celebrate the outdoors and to do so responsibly. As all of you know, Pack Fit is one of Osprey's founding principles. It is a critically important component of a customer's pack selection process and ultimately their experience in the outdoors. But to do pack fit right, we need to continually evolve and evaluate not only our pack designs, but how to fit a customer appropriately. So today, we wanna to provide to you a contactless pack fit option. Let's start by going through some tips and tricks as well as best practices to follow. Follow contactless pack fit demonstration techniques that we will guide you through in this video. This will limit exposure for both you and your customer. Pre-fit a pack for yourself to use as your demonstration pack for the day. This limits exposure as well as assures you that you have the correct pack fit before working with a customer. Stay at least six feet, about two arms length, from your customer and other retail staff or follow recommended state and local physical distancing guidelines. Set up a pack fit station that allows proper physical distancing and if available, a mirror for your customer. This is a great way to make it easier for the customer to follow along during the contactless pack fit demonstration. Wash hands regularly, including after handling packs tried on and touched by a customer or other retail staff. Wear hand protection if adjusting and handling a customer's pack. If your customer needs help with adjusting their pack, only make adjustments to the pack when it is off body and you have appropriate space to do so. Both disposable gloves and hand washing between working with customers is recommended. Again, follow recommended state and local physical distancing guidelines. Practice routine cleaning of frequently touched surfaces. Keep disinfectant wipe or spray on hand to clean your store's pack sizer after each use. Cover your mouth and nose with a cloth face cover when others are around or follow your state and local guidelines. As the physical distancing guidelines evolve, we are doing our best to stay current and support our communities, partners, and customers. So now we're gonna walk through how to measure a customer. For this video though, I'm gonna remove my mask since I'm working with my live-in partner, Ro, and he has so kindly has, uh, jumped in here to help us and be our customer when we go through the measuring process. So I also wanna mention before we get into this, if you have a visual cue that you can give to your customer, that would be great. So whether you can bring a mirror into your pack fit area, whether you can print out our training guide as a visual cue that you can hang on that mirror or hang on a wall, possibly laminate so you can wipe it down in between customers. That's also a great resource to have. And then last but not least, there are also visuals on the pack sizer that you can have the customer look at to walk them through these steps as well. So let's go ahead and work with Ro and help uh, size him for a pack. Hey Ro, have you ever been sized for a pack before? All right, well, we're gonna start by using this pack sizer. What this does, it helps identify the torso length, which then in turn helps, helps us pick out what size pack you're gonna need. And that's gonna be our starting point for our fit. But before uh, I go ahead and demonstrate how to put it on, we're gonna look for two key spots on our bodies that help identify those measurements. So one is the iliac crest or the top of the hip bone. So if you go up your seam of your pant and then go all the way to where it gets a little bit soft and you feel that hip bone end that is your iliac crest can i go ahead and see if you found yours right there great that usually lines up with your belly button and, is, and basically that is our starting point from where we're going to measure up from from your torso and then i'm going to go ahead and show you my c7 vertebrae which is at the base of your neck Can you see how it's protruding there? All right, go ahead and turn around and let me see if you can find yours. Go ahead and look up for me. All right, great, now that you've identified that, it's given me a visual cue when you put this on, that's what I'm gonna be looking for for the sizing. So first, I'm gonna start by putting this on the center of my back. So I'm gonna pull the webbing on either side evenly. 
And then I'm gonna pull this tight enough because you wanna imagine this is gonna be a backpack on your back. The buckle is usually over the belly button. And then again, I'm gonna look for that iliac crest. See how there's a break in the hip belt? That's where I should be feeling that iliac crest. That's gonna be our starting point from where we're going to center this and measure up to find your torso length. And then we're also gonna take a look at it to see if we need to measure your hip size afterwards if we need to have a different size hip belt with that pack size. After that, I'm gonna have you pull the pack sizer towards you. There we go. And then I'm gonna have you make sure, see if you can feel that and you don't even have to touch it. And I'm gonna take a look at your measurements once you have that on. So let me go ahead and put this back on our pack hanging hook here and clean it off for you. So I have some disinfectant wipes. That'll wipe this down for you. I'm wiping off the buckles as well as the webbing. All right, now let's go ahead and have you try it out. Again, center that on your back. And the webbing is loose enough for him to be able to pull it tight. Perfect. And look for that buckle over your belly button. Again, pull it tight like you have that backpack on. And if you can go ahead and point to your iliac crest. Yep, that looks about right, great. Now, can you push the pack sizer up behind you? All right, and now look ahead like you're looking uh, hiking down the trail. Your C7 is coming in right around 18 inches or a little bit under, so your small borderline on medium. You can go ahead and take that off. And also you are small on the hip belt as well. Perfect. So now that we've done that, I'm gonna help you pick out a pack. When you're picking out a pack for a customer or they're looking, you can also show them where the pack sizing is. That's gonna be on the edge of the frame. And so it'll give you the dimensions. And I mentioned a row that he's 18 inches. So we're gonna be looking for that small slash medium size for him. So now let's walk through how to teach Ro how to put a pack on. So now that we've measured Ro, we've also picked out a pack from him. He's looking for an ultralight pack and we picked out a small exos that we're gonna try on. What I recommend is to make sure you also have pillows and weight bags in your pack fitting department so you can guide a customer through that process to make sure they have weight in their pack. So Ro, let's go ahead and walk through the steps to get your pack fitted to you. So go ahead and turn it around and we're going to loosen all the webbing. That includes on the harness, the hip belt, and the load lifters. I've already done that on my pack because I've fitted this ahead of time so, so I can walk you through these steps. Next, I take the pack and I usually grab it by the handle that you have. I put it on one leg since it's weighted, over one shoulder, and then the other. So if you can go ahead and do that. Perfect. That was pretty easy because it's an ultralight pack, huh? <laughs> All right, go ahead and pull that hip belt around. So first we're gonna start by buckling the hip belt. Let's go ahead and buckle that over our belly button and pull those evenly. So I can see, Ro, you, it's a little uneven on one side on that right side, it's a little bit smaller. If you can loosen that on your right side, exactly how you did that and pull both of them evenly, what that does, if these aren't pulled evenly, it's gonna distribute that weight unevenly and that could be really uncomfortable and not give us a good pack fit. Next, we're gonna go ahead and pull the harness. So I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see. So I'm gonna pull my harness down and back. So go ahead and do that and pull that to tension. Don't over tighten it. I'm gonna show you something. If I over, over tighten it, it picks the pack up off of my hips. So just pull it to tension. So see, I'm gonna loosen this, retighten my hip belt and pull that harness to tension. And then go ahead and take those load lifters up top and pull that those to tension as well. Great. And then last but not least, let's go ahead and buckle that sternum strap. And again, only to tension. If you over tighten it, it lifts those straps off. All right. 
So now that we have a mirror in front of us, I'm gonna have you face towards me, but look in the mirror and I'm gonna show you some key identifiers. So we went over the hip belt. If it's too small or too big, you don't wanna top out or not have enough coverage. Next, we're gonna look at the shoulder strap. So you can see my shoulder strap ends right below my armpit. Yours is a little bit short. We might wanna look into a slightly larger pack. We're gonna talk about that. So yours is looking a little bit short. Again, going the median line up your pant leg is also another way to find it. The other thing that you're gonna look for, can you see how the harness is wrapped around my shoulder and there's no gaps? Can you turn to the side for me? It looks like you have a little gap there. Can you go ahead and nudge those load lifters, loosen them a little bit? All right. So there's actually a pretty good wrap. And then next we're gonna be looking for the load lifters to be ideally at 45 degrees or at least between 30 and 60. Can you see that on my pack? It's just a little bit below 45. Now go ahead and take a look in the mirror. Yours are just a little bit below 45 too. I think we could try on a medium for you to see what that feels like because you're almost in between sizes because that harness is a little short on you. Um, but now you can see the steps that you're going to have to go through if um, you take this pack home on how to fit this right. But let's go ahead, have you take that pack off and I'm going to grab you a medium pack for you to try on as well. If you don't mind setting that aside over there, we'll get another pack for you to try. So that's an example of how you can walk a customer through a pack fit scenario. You already have your pack fit, so you know all those markers and you can communicate that easily. You let, let them look in a mirror or you look for them to see if that's working on their pack. As you could see, the Exosasia almost fit row in the small, but we said he was between a small and a medium. So there I would have him grab a medium. We'd try and fit him in that. Or let's take a look at a few other packs that you might need to adjust for them. If you have a Rook Wren, this is a pack that adjusts, a customer might be able to adjust themselves. So Ro, can you go ahead and grab that Rook for us? If I have one, I would walk him through it. If he was trying on, I would have him take it off. Go ahead and turn it around, set it on the ground for us. And so let's say we wanted to make a torso adjustment. So there's two plugs on either side where that harness is. If you can see and pull both of those out and let's move that up to the next plug one inch and push those back in. Great. So we just made an adjustment and he can easily do that on that pack. Now we might have a pack that has an interchangeable component or that might be a little bit more difficult to adjust. Um, if we have a pack like that, I recommend having a spot to hang the pack, letting the customer hang it up or set it on the ground, letting them have safe distance from you as you handle the pack. Again, following your um, local or state guidelines, whether you're gonna be wearing gloves, also having some cleaning components to wipe down buckles or harnesses, especially the areas of the packs that a customer and you are touching a lot. Once you make that adjustment for the customer, you can set it again in a designated area for them to come and get it and pick back up and try on. There you have it. Now we've walked you through how to do the contactless pack fit process. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, pack fit is a critically important component of a customer's pack selection process. And while we may not be physically close with our customers, we want them to know that we are here for them in both picking out the best pack for them, as well as guiding them and how we celebrate and recreate responsibly.